It had been approximately two years since the Israelites had left Egypt. God gave them the tent of meeting, ceremonial and ritual laws, and travel instructions during this time on Mount Sinai. Then they journeyed from Mount Sinai into the Paran wilderness on their way to the Promised Land. Then they lost sight of God's provision and protection and began to curse and complain. The Complaints of Israel and of Moses Now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. For the Lord heard it, and his anger was aroused. So the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. So he called the name of the place Tabera, because the fire of the Lord had burned among them. Now when the people complained, Israel was ordered, organized, cleansed, separated, blessed, taught how to give, reminded of God's deliverance, given God's presence, and given the tools to advance to the Promised Land in the first ten chapters of Numbers. After setting out for Canaan, the people began to complain after only a few days. It may seem strange to us that a people so blessed could still complain. God did so much in and for Israel, yet they still complained. They were still in the wilderness, and their circumstances were not easy, but nothing good came of it when the people complained. According to Allen, when the people complained, could also be translated, now the people became truly murmurous, an offense to Yahweh's ears. Clark said, What the cause of this complaining was, we know not. But surely no people had ever less cause for murmuring. They had God among them, and miracles of goodness were continually wrought in their behalf. The people complained. It displeased the Lord. Their grumbling irritated God. Complaining hearts frequently displease God, especially when they show little gratitude for what He has done in the past, and little faith in what God can do now. We do not know exactly what Israel complained about. It is possible that it stemmed from a general sense of dissatisfaction. The fire of the Lord burned among them. Israel had valued the pillar of God's fire present with them every night. The fire and the presence of God became a two-edged sword in this place. God's fire was there to comfort Israel, but it was also there to deal with their sin. Consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. Allen says, This purging fire was limited to the outskirts of the camp, a mercy of the Lord. He might have cast his fire into the very midst of the camp and killed many more persons than suffered this terrible judgment. When Moses prayed to the Lord, he was already ready to stand in the gap to divert God's wrath. God respected him and his offering, and the fire was extinguished. Moses was one of those holy men who, through faith, quenched the rage of fire. When Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. Moses prayed for the people, and the fire was put out. The location was named Tabera, burning, as a reminder of God's judgment on Israel's complaining hearts. Here is the people's sin. There were some secret grudges and discontents among them, but they had not yet erupted into an open mutiny. But how great a matter did this little fire kindle? They had received excellent laws and ordinances from God, but as soon as they left the mount of the Lord, they began to quarrel with God himself. The sinfulness of sin, which takes occasion from the commandment to be the more provoking. Interpreters inquire what they complained of. And truly, when they were furnished with so much matter for thanksgiving, one may justly wonder where they found any matter for complaint. Some may have complained that they were removed from Mount Sinai, where they had been resting for so long, while others may have complained that they were not removed sooner. Some may have complained about the weather, while others may have complained about the routes. Some may have thought three days' journey was too long, while others may have thought it was not long enough because it did not bring them into Canaan. When we consider how their camp was guided, guarded, and graced, and what good victuals and company they had, and what care was taken of them in their marches so that their feet did not swell or their clothes wore, we might wonder what could have been done more for a people to make them easy. The judgment wherewith God chastised them for this sin. The fire of the Lord burnt among them such flashes of fire from the cloud as had consumed Nadab and Abihu. Praise brings the blessing of the Lord. Complaining causes him to burn. The fire could be seen raging from the camp's outskirts. 
Clearly, the intensity of the whining was proportional to the distance from the tabernacle. When we believe we can do as much or more than Almighty God, we exhibit the same lack of faith. Such a lack of faith demonstrates that we have no idea how to trust God you will find something to complain about if you look long and hard enough. So stop looking. Remove your gaze from the weeds. Major in God's grace. Gather your blessings. Keep track of His kindnesses. Gather and recite your reasons for gratitude. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, Amplified Bible. Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Be unceasing and persistent in prayer. In every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Consider the aggregate of those terms. Always rejoice. Continue to pray. Give thanks in all circumstances. Thankfulness is a prominent Bible theme. Digging into the scriptures a little more deeply, we understand why we should be thankful and also how to have gratitude in different circumstances. Psalm chapter 136 verse 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Here we have two reasons to be thankful, God's constant goodness and His steadfast love. When we recognize the nature of our depravity and understand that, apart from God, there is only death John chapter 10 verse 10, Romans chapter 7 verse 5, our natural response is to be grateful for the life he gives. Psalm chapter 30 gives praise to God for his deliverance. David writes, I will exalt you, Lord, for you have lifted me up, and have not let my enemies rejoice over me. Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you healed me. Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You have kept me alive, that I would not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you his godly ones, and praise the mention of his holiness. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. Now, as for me, I say in my prosperity, I will never be moved. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain to stand strong. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. And to the Lord, I pleaded for compassion. What gain is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be gracious to me. Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing for me. You have untied my sackcloth and encircled me with joy, that my soul may sing praise to you and not be silent. Following an obviously difficult circumstance, David expresses his gratitude to God in this passage. This psalm of thanksgiving not only praises God in the present, but also recalls God's faithfulness in the past. It is a declaration of God's character, which is so wonderful that only praise is appropriate. We also have examples of being thankful in the face of adversity. Psalm chapter 28 depicts David's anguish, for example. It is a pleading with God for mercy, protection, and justice. In the midst of adversity, David remembers who God is and gives thanks as a result of knowing and trusting God. Even in the face of death, Job had a similar attitude of praise. The New Testament contains examples of believers' gratitude as well. Despite being persecuted, Paul wrote, But thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us reveals the fragrance of the knowledge of Him in every place. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 The writer of Hebrews says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful, and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 Peter gives the reason to be thankful for grief and all kinds of trials, saying that, through the hardships, our faith may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. The people of God are thankful people, for they discover how much they have been given. According to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, one of the characteristics of the last days is a lack of thanksgiving. 
wicked individuals will be ungrateful. We should be thankful because God is worthy of our thanksgiving. It is only right to credit Him for every good and perfect gift He gives. James chapter 1, verse 17. When we are thankful, our focus shifts away from selfish desires and away from the pain of our current circumstances. Expressing gratitude reminds us that God is in control. So, being thankful is not only appropriate, it is also healthy and beneficial to us. It reminds us of the bigger picture that we belong to God.